On this episode of China Uncensored, does Xi Jinping have the soccer balls to fight corruption? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Xi Jinping, paramount leader of the Chinese Communist Party, chairman of the Central Military Commission, and huge soccer fan. And it's not just Xi Jinping. Soccer, or football as some people erroneously call it, is pretty popular in China. But for the country that invented the sport 2,000 years ago, it's surprisingly bad at producing soccer champions. But that's going to change. Because Xi Jinping is a baller, and he wants to make soccer huge in China. He said his biggest hope for Chinese soccer is that its teams become among the world's best. Because in communist China, the party tells you what sport to like. Xi Jinping has a nationwide soccer plan. Because to get people to truly love soccer, you need the kind of top-down, centralized approach you can only get under authoritarian regimes. In fact, the State Council even released a Chinese Soccer Reform and Development Directive. Because when you want to promote a sport, the first question is, what kind of guiding communist ideology do you need? Like the theories of Deng Xiaoping, or the Three Represents, or the Five Defensive Kicks. The directive also states that 50,000 schools need to specialize in soccer by 2025, up from 5,000. It also wants to more than sextuple the number of soccer fields, from 11,000 now to 70,000 by the end of 2020. Ping-pong diplomacy was so Cold War. And guess what? When the head honcho says soccer is very important, government officials and influential business leaders at all levels decide they too love soccer. And they've been going to crazy lengths to outdo each other, proving how much more they love the game than the other jerk, in the hopes of hitting a home run with Xi Jinping. What's that, Shelley? <laughs> Sorry, wrong sport. Make a slam dunk with Xi Jinping. Thanks, Shelley. Take, for instance, this 167-acre campus containing 50 soccer fields and a squad of soccer coaches from Spain. It's part of the world's largest soccer academy, owned by the Evergrande Group, run by Chinese property tycoon Xu Jiayin. At the top of China's soccer pyramid is the Chinese Football Association Super League, also known as the Chinese Super Friends League of Justice. Since Chinese scientists have not yet perfected soccer-playing robots, the Chinese Super League is coughing up huge sums of money to recruit players from around the world to come to China to play and teach. They're even outspending the English Premier League by more than $100 million. That's quite a full-court press. They recently turned this Argentinian soccer star into the highest-paid player in the world. He has a $40 million contract with Shanghai Shenhua, a Chinese soccer club I'd never even heard of until this week. And it's not just him. China has four of the top 10 highest-paid soccer players in the world. The number two guy gets paid over 25 million. Next at number five, over 20 million. Number nine, 16 and a half. That's sad. Only 16 and a half million dollars? What can you even buy with that? Anyway, why is Xi Jinping so focused on reforming Chinese soccer? Well, let's recap. Soccer in China involves big government, big business, and lots of money. Would you be surprised if I told you soccer in China is riddled with corruption? Yes, it turns out soccer in China is somehow even more corrupt than FIFA. And it's been corrupt for years. So corrupt that in 2008, state-run CCTV refused to broadcast soccer matches for more than three years. They cited Chinese soccer's lack of professional ethics, which is pretty rich coming from CCTV. It's like Lindsay Lohan calling Miley Cyrus not very professional. So in China, match-fixing and bribes are rampant. China's top referee, Lu Jun, used to be called the Golden Whistle. In retrospect, it was a good name because he was making so much money in bribes. But he finally got put in the penalty box when he was sentenced to five and a half years in jail 
for taking $128,000 in bribes to swing the outcome of seven games in 2003. And remember that giant soccer academy built by Evergrande Group? Well, it also owns one of the major soccer clubs in the Chinese Super League. And one of its coaches was caught paying almost $300,000 to a rival coach to ensure his team won. Maybe it's more like the League of Shadows. Since gambling is mostly illegal in China, a huge $600 billion underground gambling syndicate sprung up to handle illegal sports betting. By comparison, all of Macau, the only place in China where gambling is legal, brought in only about $28 billion in 2016. But after Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, he started applying his anti-corruption campaign to soccer. CCTV even started broadcasting the game again. So why the reforms? Maybe it was just so Xi Jinping could have his photo op with David Beckham. Or maybe it's because companies were using soccer to launder money. You see, there's one big issue that Chinese authorities have been struggling to control, and that's the massive amounts of money people are trying to move out of China. It's almost like they don't think it's safe there. Coincidentally, Chinese companies have been spending a lot of money to buy foreign soccer teams. According to courts, Chinese buyers have invested over $2 billion in 14 European soccer teams since 2015. And not just bargain basement teams either. Big names like AC Milan. But some of these deals might just be a way for investors to get their money out of China. In fact, China's top foreign exchange regulator accused Chinese firms of moving assets overseas under the cover of deals that don't make good business sense. In particular, the acquisition of foreign soccer teams. What a curveball. So with all the spending and massive, massive corruption, you'd at least think China would be an up-and-coming soccer world power. But according to the current FIFA slash Coca-Cola world ranking, China comes in at 86th, which is below Montenegro. I don't even know where that is, but I looked it up, and apparently that entire country has a smaller population than most third-tier Chinese cities. But it still has a better national soccer team. And without some kind of Hail Mary, China's national team is less and less likely to qualify for next year's World Cup. It looks like the China soccer dream still has a long way to go before it can knock one out of the park. So what do you think of Xi Jinping's plans to turn the world's most corrupt soccer league into champions? Now that's a movie idea if I ever heard one. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.